bless the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we magnify you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, you're worthy. You're worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be honored and adored, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus on today. Great is thy faithfulness to us, God, today. So we just honor the Lord today. We are so very glad and so very thankful to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. Hallelujah. He didn't, we used to sing a song. I'm going to sing it in a minute. He didn't have to let us live to see this day, but I'm so glad to be in the service of the Lord one more time. So we bless and thank the Lord for allowing us to see this day, waking us up. We shouldn't take it for granted that God woke us up this morning, that we could see and we could speak and we had the faculties of our minds and the activities of our limbs. God, I thank you and I bless you and I magnify you for the little things. It's the little things we take for granted in our day to day. But if we didn't have them, well, our world would be shook, amen? We would we would know how to, how to do and we'd have to, figure out how to do life in a totally different way. But I thank the name of Jesus for all of his many blessings on today. Thank you so much for joining us online. Amen, Sister Rose, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being here in the building. We honor the Lord on today, amen. So we're gonna get ready to get started. Um, I did have a song of high praise that I wanted to sing. And um, so I'll start with, well, I'll read the, no, yeah, I'll start with that. I'll start with the song, and um, then we'll read the scripture, and then we'll go into worship. Um, but we will also have prayer. Amen. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Um, it's just a simple song. It says, um, I'm so glad to be in this service. I'm so glad to be in this service. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. I'm so glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. Oh, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. But I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. I'm so glad to be in the service, yeah. Glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. Oh, he didn't have to let me live. He didn't have to let me live. But I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. I'm so glad to be in the service, yeah. Glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time, one more time. No, he didn't have to let me live. Oh, he didn't have to let me live. But I'm so glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. One more time, hallelujah. Are you glad to be in the service? Are you glad to be able to enter into his presence? Hallelujah, and into his courts. Are you glad that he woke you up this morning? Are you glad that he blessed you and kept you all week and all night long? Are you glad, hallelujah? God, I'm glad, because you didn't have to let me see this day, hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus on today. God is so good, so very good, and so very worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Oh, bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we just magnify you today, God. Um, our scripture reading on today is coming from Romans. I'm just reading one verse. Hallelujah. Romans uh, chapter 11. God, we thank you for being here one more time. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 11 and verse number 16. Hallelujah. And it is customary that we stand at the reading of God's word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
oh, we're glad, we're glad. Somebody act like you're glad about it, hallelujah. Give him praise if you're glad about it, hallelujah. Oh, God, I thank you, hallelujah, in spite of me, God. Lord God, you are yet worthy, hallelujah. In spite of my faults, God, you are yet worthy, hallelujah, and I'm glad to be here. Romans chapter 11, hallelujah. And verse number 16 says, for of him, hallelujah, and it is through him and to him are all things to whom he glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just go into a time of prayer. Oh God, we bless you today. Oh God. Hallelujah. We honor you today, Lord God. Oh God, we honor you, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord God. It's no goodness of our own, Lord God, but it's of you, Lord God. It's unto you, Lord God. Hallelujah. It's through you, Lord God, that we live and we move and we have our being, oh God. Lord God, it's because of you, Lord God, that we're able, Lord God, to go throughout each day, oh God. It's because of you, Father God, Lord God, that we have, Lord God, the things that we need because you are our ultimate provider. It's because of you, Lord God, Lord God, that we have peace and that we can have joy, Lord God, and that we can have a firm foundation. God, it's because of you, Lord God, and because of you, Lord God, I can face tomorrow as the songwriter says, because of you, oh God, I can see my way through, Lord God, because of you, Lord God, hallelujah, I can do all things as you said in your word, Lord God, through Christ that strengthens me. God, it's because of you and you alone that I stand here today, Lord God, Lord God, for we are all sinners saved by grace, oh God, hallelujah. But we thank you, Lord God, and we give you glory and honor. We give you praise on today, Lord God. It's because of you, Father God. It's because of you, God. And we stand in a position, Lord God, to praise you and magnify you, to worship you and give you glory and honor today, Father God. Lord, I just thank you, Lord God, for keeping us all week long. God, I thank you for allowing us to come into your presence. God, I thank you, Lord God, for saving a wretch like me. Oh, God, I thank you, Lord God, for looking beyond my faults and seeing every one of my needs. God, I thank you, Lord God, today, Father, because you didn't leave me where I were, Lord God, but you keep going going after the one, Lord God, the one lost sheep, Father. You keep coming after me, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you keep reaching for us, God. You keep reaching for us, God. Hallelujah. Because you will that none would perish, Lord God, but that all would come to repentance. God, we thank you today, Lord God, for not giving up on us and not turning us away, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we glorify your name today and we ask you, oh God, to be with us today. Be with us in this service, God. Give us a word, Lord God, to convict us, oh God, and challenge us, Lord God, to become more and more committed to you as you work to conform us into the image of your son, Jesus. Oh God, I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you are for us and not against us, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today. We worship you today, oh God, and we give you glory, honor, and praise, Lord God. Be with your manservant today as he gives the word, Lord God. Speak through him, Lord God. Strengthen him, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we give you, Lord God, praise. We'll be careful to give your name praise, glory, and honor in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, somebody, just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you know where your help comes from, hallelujah, you ought to bless him on today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, because you are our help. You are our very present help, oh God. In the time of trouble, we honor God today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to get ready to sing a song. Hallelujah. Of worship unto God. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy of it all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. and angels bow before your throne all the elders cast their crowns before the land of God 
God and see you worthy of it all. Yes, you worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You deserve the glory.
Jesus, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Day and night, night and day, let incense arise. All day and night, night and day, let incense arise. Day and night, night and day, let worship arise. All day and night, night and day, Day and night, night and day, let my worship arise. All day and night, night and day, let worship arise. All day and night, night and day, let worship arise. All day and night, night and day, let worship arise. Because you are worthy of it all. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things, and to you are all things. You still deserve the glory. Oh, you are the of it all, yes, you are the of it all, yes, for from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory. Oh, oh, you deserve the glory. We bless your name, Jesus, for you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. Yes, you deserve the glory. We give you glory, God, because you deserve the glory. In every city. Situation. Oh, you deserve the glory. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We honor you, Father God. You deserve the glory, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, for this time that you've given us, Lord God. Oh, we worship you, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God. 
We give you the honor and the praise, oh God. Yes, oh God, you deserve it, Father God. Thank you, Lord God, for keeping us, Lord God, this week, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for being with us, Lord God. And thank you, Lord God, for answering our needs, oh God. Thank you, Lord God, for your grace. Thank you for your love, your blessings, Lord God, that you continue to share abroad on us, Lord God. For you deserve the glory, Lord God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord God. Bless you, Lord God. We honor you and we glorify your name. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. Amen and amen. May God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that you're all doing well today. Amen. Amen. I've got a little bit of a different setup today. I'm not normally a mic holder. I like my hands free, <laughs> but but we got it. My brother, Sean Burry, came in. If you see the church, we, we took out like the two miles of cable that's in, that was in the background. We're getting closer to being able to show the entire pulpit. We're working on it uh, where it's more of a, a worship, so it's not so much as a, a – I thought it was like a studio, like, like we about to do a, a scene or a, of a movie or something. So getting close to worship, and we appreciate you and your patience. It was definitely a long day, so I appreciate my brother helping us yesterday. Kind of get it little by little by little. Uh, for this week, we have our Blessing Bag uh, outreach event that's going to be on Saturday at 10 a.m. And we have, I'll have some details. We already kind of sent out some information already throughout the week. So I'll send it again. If you would like to donate something for this event, they typically put together, the group typically puts together the bags on like Wednesday or Thursday. So I'm going to meet with one of the members on Wednesday. So if you have something, let me know. We can either coordinate. It's going to be closer to uh, JBSA uh, Randolph for those of you who are local. So I'm just going to meet him. I said, hey, look, I'm in uniform. I meet him at the HEB. I'm 6'5". You can't miss me at that point. In, in uniform and 6'5", I'm probably the only person that's going to be around there. But if you would like to give something for the event for this week, just send me a text, shoot me a message, say, hey, look, I want to give something. Then, um, and then I can coordinate that with you to meet with you, and then we can go ahead and uh, I'll deliver the items to uh, their personnel. And the person that actually uh, is in, in charge, or the head of the organization, actually lives in Thailand right now and is uh, doing some great mission work out there and then coordinates with individuals here to be able to continue blessing bags. So it's an opportunity for us to have uh, outreach and reaching the community. Amen. So if you're interested or want to know more, just shoot me a message. Amen. Beside that, I think that's the only thing that we have as far as notes that's going on uh, currently. Then after this event, and then we'll talk about the next one with Veterans Day. Amen. So today we're going to talk about, I changed the name at the last minute. So I talked about waiting on the promise and the process of waiting. I think that's what I, I had. I was like definitely like at the, the last second. <laughs> but so today I'm going to come from Genesis. I have like four sets of scriptures. So I, it's Genesis 15, 1 to 6. That's where we're going to start at. 16, 1 to 3, and then 16, well, actually 16, 1 to 6. And so I do have a lot of notes to give. And either I know my wife or myself will put the notes out there. So waiting on a promise and the process of waiting. Amen. And when I thought about this message, right, I uh, praise God because uh, Norman, uh, Debbie, you, you contacted me and said you'll be online. And I was like, man, I had so much notes, so many notes to give. I was like, man, how am I going to display that at the same time? I know Wayne is here. We're going to work it out, Wayne. But, you know, I have all these notes that I want to give. And so we're just trying to get through it. So we'll have the notes here because it's a lot of information I want to share. And what I'm going to break it down with is how like the typical process of waiting goes. We'll share a little bit of that from what we see in Abram and Sarai and Haggai. And then God's prom process of fulfilling a promise and then what we can do in the midst. So then there's several points that I'm going to get through and I'll try not to kind of belabor on any of those points. But I want to read through Genesis 15, 1 to 6 and then Genesis 16, 1 to 6. And then I may jump around to Genesis 17 uh, a little bit later on in the message. So that's kind of where I'm going to be today. But thank you all so much for joining us. I appreciate you joining us here locally or uh, even abroad. I praise God for that. You know, we have these opportunities 
Now, since the pandemic has really allowed us to be able to minister to people, not just here local, but also people that are around the world. So we definitely appreciate the opportunity to share God's word and to be able to partner with you in different ways in your part of the harvest to be able to continue to to build and to make disciples of all nations. Amen. That's the call. And so that's what we're looking to do. Amen. So let's go to Genesis 15, 1 to 6. Amen. So in Genesis uh, 15, 1 to 6, it says, After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and their great reward, exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless? And the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. Amen. Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given, uh, then Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my household is mine heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if they be able to number them. And he said, So shall thy seed be. And the Lord belie- and he believed in the Lord and counted it to him for righteousness. Genesis 16, 1 to 6. Now, Ab- now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare no children, and she had a handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened unto the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. I'm going to read from verse 4 to 6. I'm going to read in the Amplified. It says, And he went into the bed of Hagar, and she conceived. And when she had realized that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress regarding Sarai as insignificant because of her infertility. Then Sarai said to Abram, May the responsibility for this wrong done to me by the arrogant behavior of Hagar be upon you. I gave my maid into your arms, and when she realized that she had conceived, I was despised and looked on with disrespect. May the Lord judge who was uh, done right between you and me. And Abram said to Sarai, Look, your maid is entirely in your hands and subject to your authority. Do as you please uh, with her. So Sarai treated her harshly and humiliated her, and Hagar fled from her. Amen. So as we look at these scriptures, I kind of skipped around a little bit just to kind of hit the high notes of the relationship here. But he had a promise he received from God. And there are times whether or not we receive a promise directly from God or we're waiting for God to do something or we're desiring something of God. There is typically we go through a four stage process. Lord willing, we don't get to stage four, but it's typically in this process where number one, we may believe God, but we have a personal timeline. So God gives you a promise. There's a promise God gave me. I had a personal timeline in my mind. Now, it may be biological or it may be a deadline or you see like, hey, there's a bill that has to be paid by this date. For Abram and Sarai, there was a biological clock that's going on, right? My clock is ticking and I don't know how much time I have left, amen? So you have this personal timeline in your mind. God gives you a promise or you believe God to do something. You believe in your mind as you're believing it that it's going to be accomplished at this specific time. I don't know if anybody said had been, th- been through that before. God bless you, Mavis. Thank you so much for joining us today. So you have this situation where you believe God, but you got a personal timeline. But then there's a pause. So in question, so in, in process, in the number two of this process, what happens is that pause causes an internal panic. The panic isn't like Chicken Little where the sky is falling, we start running around and we going all over the place right away. But what happens is we begin to do little things trying to get the promise to come to pass faster than what God may have wanted because there's a pause. So I'm just going to help God out. A lot of times we're not trying to do it in a manner of deception or any type of ill intent. We're just trying to see what God said come to pass in our lives. And we see this right now with 
Sarai and Abram. So when you look back here, she gets to this place where you believe in the promise. In, in Genesis 15, he says that he's going to give him a child, right? That's going to come forth from thy own bowels and shall be thine heir. So now it comes to the point in verse 16, in, in Genesis 16 and 2, Sarai said to Abram, behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go into my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. So what happens when we get to this place of internal panic? And number three, panic leads to desperation. So you have here when you when it so it when you read this this verse, she says the Lord had restrained me from bearing, which means that she had to try at least several times. I didn't just try one time on one night and then all of a sudden the Lord's restrained me. No, I've been trying. If you hear some people that may have tried to have children on their own and can't, they they've tried several times. Years have gone by. They've tried, you know. Um, I, IVF, they've done all that they could to try to bring forth this opportunity for a child. So you get to this place where so much has happened that you realize that God is involved. I've said that in my own season. By the time I said, man, God is keeping me and restraining me, a whole lot has happened. I've tried several things already to try to bring it to pass, and it hadn't come to pass. So then you begin to become desperate in order to have this to come to pass. Because I want you to think, men, how would you feel if you've been restrained? Say, look, the Lord has restrained me from having a child, right? I'm, my wife, I'm going to give my wife to another man to have a baby. Women, think about what, you would, what that goes through in your mind to say, I'm women, uh, that I'm going to allow my husband to take another woman to have sex with her, to have a child. What do you think is going through someone's mind when that happens? See, we read it real quick. You know, we just read, we read the scripture, bam. But what, what would be going through your mind to get to a place of desperation to say, you know what, God made a promise to you, Abram, so I'm going to give you my handmaid because God's restrained me. I, we've tried several times. It doesn't say how much time has gone by. But I've gone through this so much that I realize God's restrained me. Maybe the promise will come through here. So I don't always think that we're trying in this situation. I used to think that there was something, some ill intent or something's going on. Sometimes we're just trying to receive the promise of what God said. And nothing's happened. No, I've tried. We thought it would be this way. Maybe it's that way. And we see some of the challenges and what's about to transpire. Because in number three, I would believe that both her and Hagar was in a place of desperation. Because now when, when she conceives, that now she's beginning to look down on Sarai. Right? So in, ver in Genesis 16, 4, right? She, when she realizes that she had conceived, she looked with contempt on her mistress regarding Sarai as insignificant because of her infertility. So now we see that when Abram says, look, your handmaid is in your hands, do what you want with her. So now she treats her harshly, Sarai treats her harshly, humiliates her, and she flees. So again, when you see pause turns to internal panic, panic leads to desperation. So now I don't know what to do. Sarah, uh, Hagar's like, I don't know what to do. I'm out. I'm leaving. I don't, I don't want to deal with this anymore because I want to leave. How many of us have been in this situation? We believe God, but we have our personal timeline. God has not met our need when we want it. So then we, when, when the pause, we begin to come up with ideas, trying to make it happen, trying to bring it to pass. And then it leads to desper desperation. Lastly, desperation leads to hopelessness. Now, when a person, now, this isn't this story, but I wanted to share this because some of your friends may be in this place, so you need to check on people, especially when people are going through, you know they're having a hard season, it's been a long season. Some people can do, can, can, can hide their true feelings and emotions of what's going on inside them. They do a very good job, especially your strong friends. Check on the strong ones because typically the strong ones is holding up six or seven people plus on top of whatever they got going on. And because they're the strong friends, nobody's really asking how they doing. 
because you always figure that, hey, they always good. Everything looks good, right? When you hear about this hopelessness, what happens is when you reach this place, you no longer care about the promise. You never care about what was coming to pass. All you want are being obedient to God. All you care about is ending the situation however you can. So this is where you hear about suicide, murder suicides. When you see all this death and destruction, what, violent um, assaults against other people. Because I want this to end and I have no other recourse than going in this route. We see this. And 10 years ago, this situation made me think about 10 years ago. Amen. A amen, Norman. Thank you so much for sharing. And, and when we think about this 10 years ago, right, because he talks about hope defers made the heart sick. And there was a gentleman, he was in the military, and he was being accused of a sexual assault against another airman. I'm not going to go into detail. He had asked, he had wanted to retire two years prior, but in the military we had what's called stop loss. When stop loss happens, no one can separate, no one is retiring. I'm praying to God that we don't hit no, no, <laughs> no stop loss in the next year and a half, amen, because I want to be able to roll on. So he had wanted to retire, but he, he, he wasn't able to. Two years later, now he's under investigation. When you're under investigation, you're not going anywhere. He had requested to retire in lieu of court martial. They said, no, we're go you're going to court, right? And if you're convicted, it's a federal conviction. So he said, look, I'll even give up all of my retirement rights. He was at 26 years. I'll give it all up because I, I, just so that I can just not have this federal conviction. They said, no, you're going to court. He had a family. His wife, one of his children had autism. And so he's trying to find a way out. A few days before the court martial starts, they find him in his office and he committed suicide. So when he committed suicide, there was a note from what I remember there was a note that didn't really describe that, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm taking on, this was at Yakota, so I don't know, you may remember that, Wayne, but it was in 2003. But I was there, I was still there when, when it happened. So he left a note, he didn't say that, that hey, a mission of guilt, but what he was thinking about was my wife. Because now my wife has, would have to deal with me not being here, how can she be supported? How can my family be supported? So then he made this decision to do that. This is when you think about when I lose hope in all options, right? So he passed away, he, he died. Now he's able, he's in Arlington Cemetery, which a lot of people had a problem with. But he was charged but never convicted. So as far as the military is concerned, he had an honorable service, and his wife can still receive the benefits based on death benefits. So then she can still be taken care of. People get to a place where when they lose hope, and there's hopelessness, as Norman's saying, the, it makes the heart sick. And people begin to make decisions. They make permanent decisions based on temporary circumstances that's going around them. This is the process of waiting for some people. And we pray that our brothers and sisters around us don't get to the place of hopelessness. So you need to reach out to your brothers and sisters. When people reach out to hopelessness, a brother, sister, you sharing the scripture is not going to work on that. You telling them that you need to do A, B, and C, that's not, that's not it. You need to be there. And you need to be present and minimize the, the conversation that you have unless God tells you to speak a specific word to them. Amen? People don't want to be corrected when they're hopeless. I'm not trying to listen to that. Believe me, I've been in some places. I may not have been hopeless. Well, I've been, in the, I've been in places, hopeless places. The last thing I want to be hearing, right, I, I, res, I re appreciated people just being there because I need this time to get back to where I can reverse the process, where I can hear again from God, and I'm seeing the promise again. I've been in those situations where I just, I'm out for months. I'm out. But what I remember are the people that was there for me when I was going through. And oftentimes they had, they had less than five words to say to me, but they was present. And sometimes we just need to be present in people's lives, especially your strong friends. Check on them. Ask them how they're doing. Because people aren't always checking in. Because what we're looking at is the product that they're producing. We're looking at the goals they're meeting, right? Oh, they're productive. They're doing these great things. But they're hurting and in pain on the inside about something that you may have no knowledge of. So we need to make sure that we're watching over them. Amen? Check on your strong friends. Check on everybody. Especially when God puts somebody on your heart. God puts somebody on your heart, you need to call them, you need to email them, you need to text them right away. Because that may be something going on. And say a prayer for them, too, because you don't know what's going on. They may need some intercession. Amen? 
Amen. So let's go over real quick God's process for fulfilling the promise. Number one, I want you to remember that God loves you. God loves you. He has called you right out of the muck and mire of your craziness, my craziness of my sin. I was trying to be a very good sinner and trying to do all this stuff. Like I'm, you see me and my person, my demeanor and personality. I've always had this demeanor and personality, the quiet people, right? When, when the old folks say it's the quiet ones you got to watch for. Yep. You had to watch for me because I was doing just as much dirt as everybody else was doing. I was just quiet about it. I'd be like, look, man, I'll be right back. Where are you going? Oh, man, don't worry about it. I'll be back. I go do the same dirt that they doing, and then I come back, show up, man, hey, man, where you been at? Oh, man, just here and there. Don't worry about it, man. It's all cool. But I'm doing the same stuff they doing. Nobody knows what I'm doing. God pulled me out of that, bringing us to a place where we can have eternal fellowship with him. Amen? God loves you, and he has a great plan for you. Jesus came so that we can have an abundant life. But we get to when we're waiting on the promise, right? It says that in John 10 and 10. It says what the enemy come to do. Hold on, let's read that real quick. I'm going to be in the King James. I got my Bible right here. In John 10, 10. Yes, baby. John 10, 10. Amen. The thief does not come except to the skill, to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Amen. God has come to give all of us an abundant life. And just because there's a pause, just because things aren't working out, it doesn't mean that God has left you. It doesn't mean that God has forsaken you. He says in his word, he will never leave us and never forsake us. He says in the word, amen, that the righteous are never forsaken, nor seed breaking bread. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all, from all of them. But we got to remember some things that God has a different timeline than what we have. Amen. But it doesn't mean because he's paused that he don't love you. Number two, God knows how you're feeling and what you're going through. God knows what you're going through. And a lot of times we feel like God doesn't care or God doesn't love us. That's what as we're going through this process and we have this pause, that internal panic is being is beginning to set in. Those are some of the thoughts that run through our minds, that God don't love me. God don't care about me. Man, if God loved me, I wouldn't have to go through this. I wouldn't be doing this. I'm his child. I'm, I'm his son. I'm his daughter. But there's a lot of times where God uses so many issues. He uses the things that people are doing around us in the world to be able to grow us, to bring us out. And remembering that we, he does it for his glory, that he's doing those things. God doesn't put nothing more than what we can handle. Some of us may move up weight classes. I told y'all before, it may, I may have been featherweight one day. Next thing you know, I'm a, I'm a heavyweight. And I'm like, Lord, you done put more on the rack that I got to push up. But God never puts more on us than what we, can, what we can bear. Amen. Number three, God knows your timeline, but he has, your own, but he has his own. So when we're putting on God, amen, we begin to put on God that I believe that this, because I had that. In this season, this past season, I had certain timelines. I still got some timelines, right? I'd be like, Lord, I believe that this is going to be accomplished like right here, right? Like right there. Amen. So when he has his own timeline, that means, you know, some things may not go along according to my plan. And so then that's where the conflict comes for me. There's no conflict with God. I have a conflict because I was expecting something to come when it didn't come. Amen. So we're going back to Genesis, Genesis 16 and 16. Let's go back to the, the, to the story. I'm going to go to 16, 16, and I'm going to jump in uh, Genesis 17 and 1, and then 17, 15 and 17. So in Genesis 16 and 16, it says that Abram was four score and six years. So you just multiply it by two, four score is 80. So he was 86 years old when Hagar bore Ishmael to Abram. And then that meant that Sarai was 76 years old. Amen. So you're already talking about when they're at that age, they were at the point of like, man, we don't think we can have some more, no more children. That's not their timeline. But in Genesis 17 and 1, when Abram was 90 and 9 years old, the Lord appears to Abram <laughs> and says to, to him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. God ain't said nothing to him for 13 years about this boy and about this promise. As far as Abram would have known, like, man, the promise is through Ishmael, we rolling, right? How many times have God has been quiet in your life? Ain't said nothing to you. 
And then all of a sudden, he just show up. I have that in my own season. God, I've been asking God for something specifically. It was a season where God gave a five-year timeline. And I'm asking God from the moment he said it all the way through, like, Lord, when is going to happen? What's this? What's this? What's that? God didn't say nothing to me for like two and a half years. And then started giving, then began to reveal more of the promise specifically. Amen. So then he says here in Genesis 17, 17, because they started to change their names, right? He's changing their names. So he says, he says unto, um, God says unto Abram in Genesis 17, 15, Abraham, because now he's, she, he's Abraham, the father of many nations. As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name be. And I will bless her and will give thee a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her and she will be a mother of nations and kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old and shall Sarai that is 90 years old bear. Right. And verse eight and Genesis 18, 11 says in Sarai, Abraham and Sarah were both very old by this time, and Sarah was long past the age of having children. So when you believe, amen, God bless you so much for joining us. When you, when you believe that God is going to do something in your life, and he has this different timeline, right, he waited 13 years before he said anything. 13 years. Now, when you're talking about God being glorified, God will wait until the time is passed because he wants to be glorified. So when you want to be glorified, that means God may put you in a situation that seems either impossible to overcome, it will seem difficult for anyone else, but for God, nothing is impossible for him. So what happens in his timeline, he's going to wait till they're past having children. Amen. He waits till they're past having children. Now I'm going to show up. And sometimes that's what God does for us. Amen. So in number five, this means a pause is not a period. Because when you see that God waited 13 years to bring forth the child, it doesn't mean it's the end. And a lot of times when we're waiting on God, we're believing God for something. We're believing God to bring forth this promise and it's not coming to pass. That's why we begin to have panic within us, this internal panic. But if God gave you a promise and we think back to the faithfulness of God, we, we can remember that just because there's a pause, it doesn't mean that it's a period. So that's why, like when we're going through, we begin to forget about all the things that God had done for us previously. We forget that God was faithful to us in this area. God was faithful to us there. God never he left, never left me, nor forsake me over there. Right. And that's why it's important for us to remember the things of God to remember his love, to remember his kindness for us because it helps us because God is going to be faithful to do what he said. But we struggle with this. Many of us struggle. Abraham, Abraham and Sarah struggle with that. They struggle with the pause because now I just want this to come to pass and I want it to come to pass when I do. But number six, God will often wait until your timeline is close to the end or past before moving. So to be some days like God will show up on the, the 11th hour and 59 minutes and 52 seconds left, he shows up. Sometimes, God, the, the bill is past due. God shows up. And we're waiting for him. But God, in number seven, he is always faithful to do what he said he would do. He's always faithful, always faithful to meet our need. He's always faithful to take care of us. He's always faithful to be loving and kind. He's always faithful to be there. It's just not when we want, when we want personally. And we struggle with that. Many of us struggle with the process of just waiting on God to perform and do what he said he was going to do. God is faithful and he's loving and kind. And we see this with, with Abram and Sarai, right? They, they, like she was past childbearing. Well, she was getting close, right? She was 76 around that time. She's having some trouble, right? I can't have any children. Maybe it's going to come through Hagar. And a woman gives her another man, her husband, another woman. What, that, what do you think that means and what that does for a person? And then to see this woman as she's bearing a child begin to look down on her. Oh, man, you're talking about jealous. She cared. She loved her husband. And she cared about the situation. She didn't care about it. She wouldn't care what, what, was, what Sarah, what Hagar was doing. But she did. 
Because in the pause, they were trying to bring about the promise. And many of us do that. I do that. I've done that in this season, literally. I was trying to bring forth the promise of what God was saying in any way I could. And God stopped me at every turn. I mean, I spent a whole lot of money, a whole lot of time. And God still was like, nope, 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 nope. And I was reaching this place of hopelessness. I was reaching this place like, Lord, I don't know what else to do. I just stopped. Like, I, I don't want to even move forward. It took me a long time to try to get to, get back going. I was reaching this place where I was desperate. And it's like, Lord, I don't know. But God, there's still the promise that's there. The promise still exists. It doesn't go away just because there's a pause. So what we have to do in the waiting, I got these five points and I'm going to close. What we have to do while we're waiting on God to fulfill this promise, number one is to pause. Don't do anything. Sometimes don't think about nothing bad. Don't think about doing anything. Don't think about moving. Just be still. I'm not, it don't even have to be where I'm listening to the scriptures right now. I'm not doing, just pause. Don't do a single thing. Because oftentimes when we're, when we're doing those things, we get ourselves into trouble. Now, do we need to, to, to listen to worship and do that? Yes, I'm going to get there in a second. But if you do nothing else in those moments, when you feel anxious, you feel worried, just stop. Because when we want to move, that's when we begin to get ourselves into trouble. That's when we begin to do things that's going to get us that some things that we're trying to get out right now was because we was just moving too fast. We was moving outside of God's will and his time. So now I got to fix this area and I got to go back over here and still wait on God. Because while you're doing stuff and wilding out, God's still like, okay, you got to get yourself out of that. But I'm still going to, I'm not going to speed up the process just because you went and did this. So I need you to pause. Number two, I want you to wash yourself with the word in worship. And we talk about this before where when you're going through some things, I had to do this recently. I just got to put on some music, some worship music. Sometimes you don't even feel like praying. When you're in a place of desperation and hopelessness, you're, you're not, you may not be praying, and you may not be seeking God. And I'm not getting on nobody for that. I'm just keeping it 100. I'm just keeping it real. Sometimes in those moments, that's the last thing that we want to do. But what we do is we listen to music. We listen to worship music. We listen to, to other people that we know that are encouraging to help us get back up. Right. We've fallen. As the word says, a just man falls seven times and rises up again that I felt I fell. And when I'm falling, like right now, I, I don't have any any words to say to God right now. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. Right. I feel like David in some of the songs where I, like I just want to scream out because I, I don't know what to do. And I'm trying to fix this. All I need is for God's word to wash over me. I just need I just need to listen. Like I have some dramatized versions of the Bible. I just listen to it on my iPhone. I have some. Uh, music I listen to, I did that today while I'm driving, right? I just had, I have a worship playlist. I just played the playlist. Because then while it's washing over me, now it begins to set, reset me. It begins to reset my thinking. It begins to reset my mind to think back on God, right? And we talked about the worship music that leads you back to God, that leads you, that gets you thinking about him again. Because then it begins, okay, the, you, it's almost like a wheel turning, right? My, my wheel stopped. I paused. I was filled with this anxiety. I was filled with all this anger and frustration. So then when I begin to say, okay, I'm about to move forward. When I'm listening to worship music, it allows me to be like, okay, the wheel begins to turn again. All right, we're moving again. Okay, okay, Lord. I forgot about that, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. I need, the, I need music that helps me put my mind on him, that makes me think about the Lord and his goodness and his mercy. Because in those moments when we're frustrated, in those moments when we're desperate, in those moments that we're hopeless, we forget all about it. We do. And I can't get down on people and be like, man, you need to read the word. You need to pray more. Like, man, you, they're not in that place. And some of us have been in that space. Like, man, don't, don't tell me that right now. I can't receive that. I, I need to find my way. So whatever number two helps you wa wash yourself with is a, a, some type of autopilot thing. You need to put it on auto. So I can encourage myself. I did that today, literally. Just I just need to wash myself. Because then as you begin, the wheel begins to turn again. Okay, Lord, I see you. I can remember what he said to me. I can remember his promise. I can remember that he said he loved me. He no, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. And a lot of times, God puts us through a lot of difficult situations and seasons to grow us. It's not, always, it's not to destroy us. 
but he uses the world's process and the ways in the world, all these evil people coming at us and doing different things. He uses those things to grow us. So when we look at scriptures like John, uh, James 1, 2 and 4, it's, it talks about how, you know, I can count on all joy when I go through diverse temptations. How in the world am I counting all joy? Well, I know that when I go through this, I'm going to be better after I come out. But I got to let patience have her perfect work. So when patience has her perfect work in me, then I'll be complete and entire wanting nothing. So he uses these processes to grow us. You think about the faith of Abraham and Sarah. They believe God already. But now you think about the testimony of, man, y'all have a child, and y'all way past childbearing years. You're almost 100 years old, man. You having a child? You having a baby? Man, look at God. Look at what God has done. We can't say we did it ourselves. But if it happens earlier, we may not be saying, look at God. Well, you know, you're 30 years old. You can have some babies. Okay, cool. There's a whole difference when you're 90, 99, 100. Oh, man, look at the Lord. He wants to be glorified. So then I remember what God said. And then I'm encouraged by what he said to me. And then, number four, I remember what he said in his word. I remember that he said, never leave me, nor forsake me. I remember that he says, as long as I seek ye first in Matthew 6, as long as I seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all my needs will be taken care of. Not all my wants, right? Because <laughs> I, I, get, I get caught up in that sometimes because I have some wants that I want God to give me. But God, I look back and I'm like, no, I got what I need. Okay, I'm all right. I need to, get, I need to put that back in proper perspective. I got to know that even as I'm going through, that he's, I'm not forsaken. I know that the righteous are never forsaken, nor is seed begging bread, right? David said that. I'm, I was young, and now I'm old. I ain't never seen that. i never seen the righteous forsaken. It may, look, it may not be where I'm living in a mansion and where I'm driving the Rolls Royce or something, but I'm never forsaken. And God always, he says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them from them all. God, I mean, we're going to go through some challenges and problems. No, I don't know how many of us just want to go through all this stuff. But then I say, Lord, I accept it, and I'm going to walk through it because I, I know there's some, a promise in there. I know there's a purpose in there. I know after this I'm going to look a little bit more like you, Lord. I'll do it. So then lastly, I'm going to wait on the Lord, number five. Now, in, in Isaiah 40 now, in, I'm going to go to Isaiah 40 and then 29 and 31. Now, this waiting on the Lord is different than the pause. See, in the pause, all I do is just stop. I'm, I don't, I'm not thinking about God. I ain't thinking about nobody. I ain't, I'm, just, I'm just not moving. But when I wait on the Lord, there's an intention, right? I'm going to read from the Amplified Bible. He says he gives strength to the weary because sometimes we do get weary. We do get tired. There's nothing wrong to say I'm tired. And I'm frustrated, and I don't know what to do. The scriptures talk about that. So many times, y'all, we want to come to church or we come to these places and act like nothing's ever wrong with us. We never have problems. We never have, we're never angry. I'm not a robot. I'm a person. I have emotions. I have feelings. And I get down. And scriptures like this says that he gives strength to the weary. Even He says in verse 30, even youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous men stumble badly. We don't, and, and in churches, we don't give people, and sometimes in certain circles we're in, we don't give people allowance to stumble. We don't give them, pro like, dude, he's mad. Like, we don't give them that process to be able to get through that. That, that man, they're tired. We act like they're just always supposed to be on. Dude, I'm like, I'm one of the strong people. Like, for a lot of people. I'm pouring in a lot of people. I'm not always just on all day long. I'm all, but, I, but a lot of times I am on. And I'm tired, and a lot of people don't see that. All they see is this one more person to, to grab something else from. And yesterday was long, right? And I'm pouring out, I'm pouring out. I get tired. And so when people just look to you and be like, there's one more thing to take, I get tired. So I have to wait on the Lord. But it says in verse 31, but those who wait on the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope for him. See, that's different than the first thing that I said in pause. When you pause, most of us not looking for the Lord. We ain't expecting nothing from God. I'm just here. I'm just, I'm just like, like a, a, a blob, like you have them, uh, like Naomi, she loves the, the slime stuff that's in the jars. You know, it's just slob. It's just blob. I'm just here. I'm here in the jar. I'm not moving. But when I get in my encouragement, when I'm washing myself with the word, I'm worshiping. I remember what God said. I remember what he said to me and in his word. Now I'm waiting on him. Okay, Lord, I understand there's a time and a process. 
So I'm going to expect you to do something. And I understand that it may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be 10 years from now, right? Because God didn't say nothing to Abram for 13 years. You like, I'm looking like, okay, look, who is this child right here? You come to me when I'm 99 years old talking about I'm going to have a son. Who is that? He, uh, he, uh, he, uh, you know, in those times, he could have been considered an adult, right? He's a teenager. What are we talking about? Like, he was quiet. I, if that was me, I would have thought Ishmael was the promise. And I would have moved on. I wouldn't even thought differently. We're at, we're in 13 years after God shows up. God may do the same. Now understand this. God may do the same thing with you. You got the woman with the issue of blood going on for 12 years with the infirmity in her body. She goes to all of these physicians looking for answers, spending all her money. And she spent all her money. They took all of her money and she got worse. But she didn't lose hope. Because when one day when Jesus is walking by, she's like, man, if I can just touch the hem of him and grout garment, I'll be healed. So as she's the unclean woman pushing through a crowd of people, if I can just touch his clothes, I ain't even got to talk to Jesus. I can just touch his hem. I'm good. But she kept waiting, right, expecting and looking for. So it's that hope. Because a lot of times when we get to desperation, when we get to hopelessness, we lose it all. We're like, man, I don't care no more. I don't care what happens. But when we desperate... We remember God. We're like, God, I just, I, just, I just want a release. I just want some help, Lord. But then we understand in this season, and I pray that as I'm talking today, that you just understand that there's a waiting that comes and that we'll wait on God to know that he will fulfill that which he has said. Amen? It's a process that all of us must learn. And this is where I struggle. I'm going to read Proverbs 20 and 29. I'm going to close. This is, this is my scripture. This is where I'll be at. It says, the glory of young men is their strength, and the beauty of old men is their gray head. Amen. So when I look at this, this, the glory of young men is their strength, that means I'm always trying to do something in my own strength, in my own way. I'm trying to find my own method of doing it. And then I, get mess, I mess it all up. But my gray hair means that through experience, now I can say, let me trust God and wait on it. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but that's why I got to remind myself that, man, God, if God said it, dude, you can cash that. It's a check. You can cash it. It's, it's good. God's going to come through. It just may not be when I want it. So then the question comes for all of us today, are we willing to wait? Because, see, when we wait on God and he renews our strength, he's going to give us exactly what we need to finish. God's going to give you the strength. He's going to give you the grace. He's going to give you the help. He's going to give you the resources, everything you need to finish, right? Just like he sent the brother here to help us, you know, yesterday to clean up all these wires. We had wires all over the place, right? But then I was trying to put these lights up because we have these bigger lights right here. I was trying to put little lights up there, and I was like, man, I don't have the grace for that right now. It's 7 o'clock. I'm tired. I was like, dude, I got to go home. I got to go still got to go home, shave, cut my hair. I literally shaved, cut my hair, I ate a burger, and then I was back into another meeting. Like, literally, I only had, like, 14 minutes rest, and I'm back in another meeting. But even then, I said, okay, I don't have the grace to finish that. I, don't, I know I don't have the strength to finish. We'll leave it up there. I don't always ask people for help, so I had to reach out to my brother again, like, look, man, I need some help. Like, I can't do this on my own. Right? And I'm really, I really struggle with that. I, I struggle with, with asking for help for a number of reasons. So God working with me to, with that. But then I have to know what I have the grace to do and what I don't have the grace to do. And then I have to let it go and say, maybe not today. Because I'm the type of person that wants to do everything right now, you know, as close to right now as possible. But I have to know that God, is a, there's a process in the waiting. And waiting doesn't mean that God forgot me. I just have to remember that there's this process, but I'm waiting for the promise. Amen? Many of you have a promise Many of you have things that, that in your heart that I could never understand right now unless we have a conversation. Thoughts and cares and concerns and desires and prayers and hopes and dreams that you're looking for the Lord to, to provide. And it doesn't mean that God's forgotten about you as you're waiting. It doesn't mean that God um, has, has forsaken you. But what it means is that there's a, prom there's a process in this waiting process. And if we can just say, you know what, I'm going to wait on you, Lord, and I'm going to trust you all my heart. I may not understand what you're doing right now. I may not, you know, get it all, and I may not see it come to pass, but one day I'm going to see it. One day, right? Because we have to get to this place, y'all. Like, I, I'm thinking about, I, I'm going to share this, I'm going to close, because I just thought about the scripture. Um, 
thought about Philippians 4 and 8. We, we have this tendency, and I, I have this too sometimes, where I begin to think about the negative of life instead of the positive of life. Because I look at the pause as if God is never going to do it. Like, man, I'm, I'm never going to see anything. Nothing good will happen to my life. Nothing good will ever happen to me. And a lot of times we lose hope, but we can have nothing and be joyful. We look at the people in certain times and seasons and places, especially in this time around the, around the world. But joy is, is not always having joy is not having the abundance of things or the answer of every prayer, but it's having the, the answer and the promise from God, having that he is God and that this isn't a home. We talk about that all the time. This isn't a home. And all we're doing right now is we're just representing him everywhere we go to be faithful where we're at because one day I am going to be in eternal peace. This is a world filled with evil and a lot of evil people. But God gives us, as he comes to us, he gives us a light to be able to shine and to share with others. And others share their light with us to encourage us. Even though we may be in the minority in numbers of people, prayerfully that will change. Amen. That will there will be more people that come to Christ. But we're still greater because greater is he that is in us than he that's in the world. So my brothers and sisters, please don't allow, you know, um, I don't want my words to seem vain, but Let's not allow, like, the, the, the waiting, right? Because I'm speaking to myself today. You know, it's been a long, hard season. It's been long, long, really hard. It's been some years, some years, several years. And sometimes, you know, it just didn't feel like it was going to end, right? I'm just like, Lord, I just, you know, I, I told you guys a little while ago, like, a few weeks ago, like, man, I just want peace, man. I'm just tired. And it's just one thing after another. I feel like David, like you're just on the run and something's always jumping off, man. And I'm like, dude, I just, I'm like, Lord, I just want to break. Like, man, it's like, it seemed like right when I'm out of one thing, it's like I'm back in the fire or something else. I'm like, man, you know, I just want peace, right? And sometimes in that desire to want peace, you start making some bad decisions. Me, I've made some bad decisions. I've said some things I, I regret saying. I've done some things I regret doing. But, man, it's like I don't want to reach this place of hopelessness. Because it's hard, you know, but God is with us. And he sends other people around us to encourage us and to give us hope that we can keep pressing on, keep moving toward the promise. There's a promise for you, and it's a promise for me. Amen? So let us continue. Like, amen, if, like I said, if you are in that place right now and you are feeling desperate or you're feeling hopeless, I want you to pause. And, I, and I'm saying this, you know, my desire as a pastor is to help people, as a pastor, to keep people in Christ. That's, that's a pastor's role. If you're in the fold, my role is to help bring you, to keep you here. And sometimes, amen, I just need to pause. If you don't do nothing else, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you just need to stop. Don't think about what you're going to do next. Just be. Amen. And, and not feeding yourself with something that's negative, right? You Sometimes we pause and hang out with the wrong people. We watching the wrong things. I just got to stop moving. And I need to wash myself with the word. I need to wash myself with some worship. If you don't you do nothing else, most of us in here has a song that, that always hits our, heart, our hearts. There's a song that used to hit me. I was, I was in, in high school, the song, uh, Sounds of Blackness, Optimistic. I didn't know it was a gospel song. I wasn't in Christ. I mean, I love that song. That's like my number one favorite song of all time from 92 on, even to this day. It's still my favorite song. I'm have, I haven't listened to it in about, about a month or so, so I need to listen to it today when I get home. But, man, it's been my favorite song. But it's about optimistic and, and looking, look, looking to the Lord. I didn't know they was talking about that. I thought, I mean, I like the beat. But what can you do to find that encouragement in the Lord? Amen? Because then we can get to this place where we can keep thinking about things that are true in, 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 in Philippians 4 and 8. Things that are true, things that are noble, things that are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praise or anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. So then we can get to the place where I'm meditating and I'm thinking that something good could happen to me. All right, so many times we get to this place like we're like, man, nothing good will ever happen. Nothing good will ever come out of my life. And we get to that place where we're beginning the, the, those beginning stages of hopelessness. But let us keep just looking to the Lord. Amen. 
every answer. Like, I've got, I, believe me, y'all, I've been in some bad spaces mentally. But even in the process of those bad spaces I've been in, I'm like, man, all my hopes in God. Like, what am I supposed to do? Like, every answer is in him. So I, I don't know what else to do, what else to say, because I know my answer is in him. My hope is in him. I'm just, I'm just trying to find an answer right now. Amen? So let's keep looking to God. And if you guys need some help, if that's you, man, you reach out. You send us a note on this message, right? You send me an email. You send some way. You ain't got to say a lot. You know, if, if it's, it's you and you put and God put me put you on my heart, you can guarantee I'm, I'm reaching out to you. But if you need help, man, you don't have to do this alone. You don't have to walk alone. I don't, I'm not even there to give you a whole bunch of scripture. You just want to go out to eat, man. We just have a have a meal and sometimes just having a meal and talking about something, just anything, just getting out and connecting with people. Sometimes that's all you need to kind of restart, get your restart. Whatever it takes to get you jump started back into Christ, to get you back on the road, man, let's do it. But there is hope. Amen. The promise still exists. Just because there's a pause doesn't mean it's a period. And I know how you feel. Believe me, my brother, my sister. Dude, I, there's some things I want out of it. There are some deadlines I see coming up, right? I'm retiring another year and a half. Right. There's a lot of stuff that's coming and right. That's coming fast. Before I know it, man, I'll be here. I'll be at retirement age. I, like I'm retiring from the military. It's done. The military's career is over and there's other things. So I'm looking at deadlines myself. But even as I'm looking at deadlines and other things that's happening all around me, I still got to look to God. And say, God, it's in you. I can't, you know, God has stopped me from doing a whole lot of stuff in business. I mean, when I say stop me, he stopped me in several ways. And I realized, like, God, I've tried for two, three years trying to get, get ahead. You've blocked everyone. And I got mad. I was mad and frustrated because I know he's doing it. <laughs> I was like, God, I knew it was you. But you know what my problem was? My problem was I didn't prioritize the church, and I told you guys that. So last month, man, I've been prioritizing the church. What did God do after this? He's like, start up all that other stuff. Start the start T-shirt business and start the real estate again. Roll that right back in again. I'm like, Lord, I don't know what to do now. But he's like, keep the church first. Because I didn't have it first before. I was always just kind of running on fumes, running on empty, trying to run a church. Like, no, my church is the priority, Hamp, right? For me, my church is the priority first. Then you do everything else. Don't do everything else and then give me the crumbs, right? I got to give God the, what's first and then everything else. Amen? Amen. I won't run on because y'all know I could talk forever. But I want y'all to continue to remember, amen, don't forget about this. While you're waiting on the promise. Remember that there's a process in the waiting. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, we just thank you for this time that you've given us, oh God. I thank you for your word. I thank you for coming to us, oh God, to be with us, oh God, and to, to comfort us, oh God, in the midst of the, our waiting, Father. Waiting for a lot of us is real hard to do, Lord, because there's times we don't hear from you. We don't hear from our friends. Our friends may tell us opposite of what you say, oh God, and we so many times, oh God, we get frustrated, we get confused, oh God. We don't know what to do, Father. But Lord, we acknowledge you because we know that you're faithful. That when the time comes, oh God, you'll speak a word. When the time comes, oh God, you'll tell us the news. When the time comes, oh God, you, you'll make the move, oh God. You'll begin to reveal when it's time. But today may not be time. So while we wait, oh God, help us to be faithful. Give us your grace, oh God. Lord God, there are days when we just feel weak. We want to give up. We want to stop. We won't want to keep going. We just want peace. We just want out, Lord God. And it's in these moments that we need your mercy and grace, Lord God. You know how it feels, Lord God, to be lonely and to be hurting and to be in pain, Lord God. We need your angels to come and minister to us in these moments, Lord God. We need your word to wash over us, Lord God. We need the people you have sent, Lord God, to sing worship, to minister to our hearts, Lord God. We need your help today, Father. We just want to be faithful. And, Lord God, ultimately, let it be where we want to be with you forever. So, Lord God, we thank you for this moment that you've given us, Lord God, to teach us and to share with us, Lord God, how we can continue to wait on the promise and wait in a way, Lord God, that is honorable and pleasing in your sight, Lord God, that seeks you first in the kingdom of God, Lord God. We just ask, Lord God, for your help for, and your strength for each and every person who is hurting today, Lord God. Minister to their hearts, Lord God. Send them resources and people, Lord God, to help them 
and to encourage them, Lord God, and to help them to continue to stand. To find people, Lord God, that will empathize with them and walk with them, Lord God, and will help them at due season to provide a great word when it's necessary, but sometimes just to be there with their presence, Lord. We love you, Father God, and we bless you in these opportunities and these seasons that we're given, and we just ask for your continued help, Lord God, that we will continue to look to our brother to our left and to our right, our sister to our left and our right, and to see what they may need before we ask for something ourselves. Let us continue to be servants unto others and to remember that our brothers and sisters may be hurting in ways in which we can never imagine. Father, we love you, and we honor you for this day, Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. We appreciate you joining us today online and in person. We pray that God will bless you. If you listen to this message and you do not know the Lord and you say, man, I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. I want to become a Christian. Please reach out to us. As I told you before, we like to we want to be able to share with you the message of the gospel. We want people to count the cost, as the Bible says. So we do have some free materials, some books I've written that I can share with you that talks about the entire story of God, the greatest love story ever written to share with you about Christ about the Lord, and about the process for you counting the cost and what it means for you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. So we would love to be able to talk with you about that. If you have any concerns, you have prayer requests, if there's some way something I said in this message, you're like, man, that's me and I need some help, please reach out to me. You don't have to be in detail. And ladies, we, uh, my wife is here as well, an anointed woman of God, an evangelist, to be able to help you through your situation. We are here to walk with you. It don't matter how many people are in this building. It don't matter how many people are in this the community, no matter if you go online, whoever is here, we're here to help them and here to walk with you and to help you live as a faithful disciple of Jesus. Amen. Because we want people to hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. It's, it's hard enough on this earth, right? But as the Lord says, there's enough trouble each day. So I don't want no one to stand before the Lord and not hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. So let's be faithful to where the Lord's calling us. As I said before, if you have a donation, we're going to do uh, blessing bags this Saturday. So if you have a donation that you want to give for this week, amen, because anything you give on Saturday will be used for, uh, what is it, November? But if you want to do something for this month, let me know because I'm going to deliver the bags or the supplies on Wednesday. So if you have something to give, reach out to me, let me know, and then I will be able to deliver those. Or if you want to meet as well, or if you want to help put bags together because they put bags together on Wednesday or Thursday before so actually, this this wouldn't say Thursday. So if you want to be a part of that, just let me know, and I'll get you connected with the uh, the team that is here to put together the blessing bags to give out next week. Amen. So until the next time, y'all, y'all be blessed. Keep looking to the hills. Love y'all. Y'all take care. <laughs>